plan. Let's plan. Let's plan. Let's plan from here. Let's talk about this. How do I start from here? Now, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you something. Do you know that if you, if you are to start your own business now, some of you, I think you are already working on something. Okay. It's very, very important for you to make sure that you have entered into an agreement with somebody. It can't be just yourself and yourself. No. Which means after God has given you an idea, just like when God spoke to Jeremiah, after he heard from God, the voice was so clear that you'll get this piece of land. And then he moved on into the paperwork. You have brilliant ideas that you have. And some of you, the reason why your idea is not growing, it's not the devil fighting it, even God himself. Because he would want you to enter into an agreement. And your idea has to be authenticated. Get that company registered. Oh, I think, I think I'm about to have a problem here now. Listen. Registering a company is, is simply registering an idea. You are registering a vision that you got, a dream that you got from God. Though it is a dream and a revelation from God, there is a requirement from the local government that for that dream to get implemented, it has to be certified. Right. Uh -huh. Though you got it from God, but we have to permit you down here. God has given them that mandate to make sure that there is no vision pursued except it gets an approval from them. God gave that power to the government to make sure that you stop pursuing your dreams unless you enter into an agreement with them. So if you see them behaving the way they're behaving, it's because they've been mandated by God to stop you. God has commanded, go after every dream. When I speak to them, after speaking to them, you do your part. Stop them. So you register. And when you operate an unregistered company, it's just a sign that you, you don't know what you're doing. Simple. Go and find any other reason, but this is the first reason. If you, if you are operating a business that is not registered, it's a sure sign that you don't know what you are doing. Number two, it's a sign that you don't exist. So your company doesn't exist. The MD there doesn't exist. Even your wife who is the secretary there doesn't exist. Your money doesn't exist. Everything. Because you are not authorized to operate. You can have a very, very good, brilliant idea. But you only be able to offer service. to unregistered people as well. You attract, uh, they say, birds of the same feather flock together. When you are not authentic, you attract people that are not authentic as well. 
And there are certain figures that you can never attract because you don't exist in the realms of finance. If you are going to be getting contracts from registered companies, they would want to have your own company registered first. Let's look, let's look at your papers. Let's see your papers. Let's see your papers. And there's no paper. Why do they, this is the question now, I'm, I'm about to tell you something, something that you'll never forget. Why do they want you registered? It's your dream. This is your company. And obviously it's going to be your money. Why do they want you registered? Because unless and until you are registered, they can't benefit or they cannot benefit or they can never benefit from what you are doing. So it is simply register and we eat together. From your dream, your vision, if you are going to be enjoying the benefits alone, <laughs> we are not going to support you. So they will frustrate that little idea. Because they want to know what they also get out of that tax. Tax. How are we going to tax you if you are not known? So they would want you to be known so that they would find ways, you know, the fiscal policy. They want to look into your money, how much you are getting, and so on, and they make their own calculations and sustain the economy of the nation from your dream, from your vision. So they would say, go and register. If you don't register, you can only perform up to a certain level, but you will never get the other benefits. Why the government, the local government, or the government down here is saying, if there is nothing in there for us, we will not support it. Simple. So register, and then we eat together. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. If that is the idea behind the registration of the companies, where are they borrowing that idea from? God. What makes you think that God will ever support your project if he's never going to get anything out of it? What motivates God? Before we talk about the building, the construction of the house, we are saying, let's have a source. Are we together, partners? Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15. <laughs> let's read it together, one to go. I want you to repeat it again. I want you to repeat it again because I want you to. Okay, one to go. I've called you to give you what? I've called you to give to give you what? I have called you to give you what? I've brought thee out to give you what? Yes. Can you imagine that there is such a call or such a calling 
to be called by God to be given land. Such a calling to say and to tell your friends and your relatives that God has called me. Listen. God has called. They're asking you, so why did you leave? Why, why have you left the devil? Why are you born again? Listen. <laughs> calling you to possess, to develop, and to inherit the land. So having land it's something that is very, very important which should never be undermined. God is calling a man by the name Abraham to come out of his family only to possess land. Imagine. This is something serious. So I would encourage you to go for that because you know, Do you know that even if you, even if the Bible says the borrower is always a slave to the lender and doesn't encourage borrowing, there is a kind of borrowing which is not borrowing. Especially if you are investing in properties, in land. Okay? Because even after you fail to pay it back, you still have that place. Actually, in any, in any economy that is very, very sensitive, even if you have cash, even if you have cash, you still have to borrow. It's just wisdom. In a very sensitive economy, even if you have cash to buy that house and pay one million cash, we still encourage you to borrow. It's wisdom. Especially when the economy is too sensitive. It's wisdom. Join them. And you take it little by little from under the bed and you are paying it off. Let them know that you're also borrowing. 